was trying to achieve like multi-layered sort of um, thick thick droning sort of tones with sort of that have different qualities to like a whole spectrum like a really big sound but it has the, lots of detail in there too I guess if you're talking about it classically you'd say it's quite a spectral in a way um, yeah at the time that's what I was looking for and with um, the offering album that would the, the idea where it was to um, to achieve those kind of big sort of orchestral sounds with lots of different guitar um, tracks and sort of overlaying them but there was in a structured way mm. and sort of after that 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 sound continued in a way but I sort of that was like I, I sort of I sort of reached like a an apex there as far as overdubbing was concerned and I sort of really overdub it all now so from there it's sort of the overdubbing dropped down and mostly I just record live to tape and I've sort of achieved that that multi-layering in a live context using like uh, digital delay you know, yeah the idea originally with the digital delay pedal was to replicate live what I did with offering you know in the studio so to speak mm. in a recording environment by building up those layers of different um, you know, bits of guitar. Um, um, so that's what I did originally with that. But then I sort of discovered all these sort of new possibilities with um, sort of working with live, generating live loops and working with them. Um, and I sort of got sick of just doing that offering type stuff live. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, that, that led to that. So I found if I did this more kind of sparse if I could generate these more kind of sparse, smaller sounds with the guitar, then I could sort of work with them live with the with the pedal. So, so that sort of come about by just sort of, I guess one area, one one area of sort of uh, musical investigation was mine. Like that was exhausted for me, and then um, th because I'd sort of progressed in a way with the technically with the pedal, then that that sort of led to this to this other area. It's funny you should say. Uh, again, I sort of reached the end of like a vein of creative interest with what I was doing at the guitar at the time, which is the glitchy sort of guitar. In some ways it's sort of limited, it's a, it's a limited sonic palette, you know what I mean? What The way I was playing it, it can be limited in what sort of sonic material you can generate. And also if you're doing it live just with the um, with loops and things like that, I sort of felt I was limited in a way. Um, really can't remember how I got onto turntables, but a lot of it comes from um, just working with things as they break down, like you know, as break as turntables break and records break. <laughs> <laughs> and sort of go, okay, well, I'll just work with that, you know, and that can be interesting in itself. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so I guess the progression's been there now is, um, well, with the, with, the, with the records, the records are purposely broken now. Oh. Um, but even the turntables are decaying, you know, as um, I'll show you later. Like, mm. the, the turntables are working with are breaking and slowly breaking down. Um, but there, I guess there's been some more conscious influences there, like um, Christian Marclay as well, um, and Ernie Althoff as well. Mm -hmm. um, like, so Ernie Althoff's work with turntables, and, and I've spoken to him about it too, um, quite a bit. Um, I've sort of been showing him what I've been doing and, and been talking to him about how it works. And talking about just like turntables, like what you do with them, and you know what happens when the needle breaks. And Ernie says stuff like, oh well, I just put a thumbtack on it. Mm -hmm. You know, and things mm. like that. Like, oh, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I've heard of other people putting nails through yeah. the arm and stuff like that. I, I... Up 
until recently it's been the cheesiest sort of um, things you can find because the co the covers as well like I'm using the covers too huh? to actually make um, like I did that mini CD yeah. release which was made out of cheesy record covers mm. and hopefully I've got a seven inch coming out which is going to be made out of cheesy record covers as well Let's which yeah we can show an this. example here yeah. um, so yep can you see that <laughs> that's it um, so that's made out of like an LP cover and the idea is on the back here um, there's going to be broken records like that. So and so, I guess it's maybe a bit postmodern there. <laughs> what we're talking about, what I'm, what I'm, the idea of this release is um, going to release a seven-inch made up of recordings of broken records, uh. which you can then break that record <laughs> and record that, and maybe make a recording of a broken record. So what I'm really looking forward to is getting some of these and actually performing with them <laughs> as well. So. Um, um, which I have got a test pressing of, which I've sort of wanted to have been thinking about recording with, but I was thinking oh, I should probably keep it just for now. <laughs> Improvisation is a big part of what I'm doing at the moment and what I've done, especially working, going away from that, the, um, the the overdubs and things like that, which were very structured. Um, now, I guess it's more like they're structured improvisations. I think live performance is important, you know, I, I think, um, but it's got to be really live, I think. It's got to be a performance, you know what I mean? It's, it's, got to, it's, it's got to be something of interest to watch and, and be in the room with, you know? I guess that's maybe what I'm trying to achieve. It's important to see, to actually see what's happening with the turntables and that, to, um, to otherwise it could just sort of sound like someone's, oh, you know, he's just stuck a bunch of stuff through audio mulch, mm, you know? Mm. I think um, to, un to understand what's happening and to get some satisfaction from the music is to, is to see what's happening on the turntables, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so for me, I think I, wanna, I want people to see as well as hear what's happening. Right. I, 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 then I think people can appreciate it more. <laughs> There's this sort of two groups of people. There's that, the... the um, um, they're academically minded and, and they hate to be called academically minded. Well, yeah. um, and the um, and sort of the, the tradition that more c comes from post-punk and um, industrial music and things like that. So the non-academic mind. But there's, of course there's lots of crossover now. And more, I think that's just like a modern information age thing yes. now that you can, um, you can come, come out of the post-punk scene, you know, leaving school in year 10. But you can be informed about Cage and you know, electroacoustic music and things like that. That's that's the modern age now. Um, but there's this real, and it, and I think it comes from the 80s as well, that there was a real hatred between yeah, in Melbourne itself. There was a real hatred between you know, one side of the river and the other. The you know, mm. um, and you know, just even in the punk scene, bands like the Boys Next Door just didn't play with the babies and, and things like that, you know? It just didn't happen. Mm. 